Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town, one of my favorite perennial things that we do, or I shouldn't say perennial, regular things that we do is to get a update on all things library here in town. I, like many, many of you, are uh, am a huge fan of the library, so I'm particularly glad to welcome uh, the director of our libraries, Andrea and Nikolai, to let us know. Um, well, we're going to talk about several different things related to the library. First of all, Andrea, great to see you. Oh, so great to see you too, James. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, speaking of, you know, the first thing I'd like to talk about, even though we're talking about an update and we'll be looking at what's, you know, coming up um, for people to anticipate, um, I can't help but uh, ask you to uh, talk a little bit from your perspective on something just concluded, and that is the month of March, mo most of it or much of it was devoted once again to a community read. And Arlington Reads Together this year, I just found to be a particularly powerful uh, mix of both events and and the the source itself. Um, but let's hear what you let's hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, well, I have to say, I mean, th there couldn't have been um, a more topical subject for this year's community read than race relations and the topic of of equity and the kinds of conversations that the community can and should be having about race in um, in Arlington and in this country. And so our book, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together at the Cafeteria by Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, offered really a, a it offered so much in terms of, of fuel for these conversations. I mean, we brought in, in addition to Dr. Beverly Daniel, Daniel Tatum, who we'll talk about in a minute, um, we had so many wonderful speakers and presenters and discussions going on. A lot of, I mean, all of them virtual, of course. And, you know, just when we think that everyone has been zoomed out, we, you know, we see people come out for these programs and these discussions. And I was so heartened at the turnout for the, the Arlington Reads Together events. It was great. Um, mo the, the last thing that, the last program that happened was a, a poetry performance by, doc by, sorry, by Tim Hall, who is a performance poet who teaches at Berkeley and is originally from Detroit, based in Boston. And he had just had such a hopeful and um, beautiful message of love and, and trusting the process. That was his, mm -hmm. that was the subject of his presentation, trusting the process and how, even when you have doubts about yourself, your approach to a topic, your approach to a project, um, you've got to trust the process. You've got to trust all of the the sort of guidelines in place that will help you and support you in that in that discussion, in that process. And so, going back to the Dr. Tatum event, um, we had over <laughs> over two hundred people on the active Zoom plus folks who were watching on Facebook Live. And mm -hmm. I, I was blown away. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous day. It was the yeah, first yeah. truly gorgeous and beautiful day of like in the 60s, you know. And so we were a little bit concerned that the nice weather would just, you know, draw away a lot of audience. But we were just really delighted at the turnout. And Dr. Tatum was so powerful. She has such a warm and positive and she's a storyteller. She has such a, a beautiful way of relating to the topic of race and, and making it relatable to other people who might not be terribly familiar with it or comfortable talking about certain aspects of it. And I think um, I, I would just encourage anyone who did not get a chance to, to see her presentation um, to tune into ACMI and watch it. It's a little over an hour and it is time incredibly well spent just fast forward through my introduction. I just give a bio. Just <laughs> seriously, just fast through, fast forward through me. Get to Dr. Tatum and Dr. McNeil because, of course, Dr. Tatum was in conversation with Rod McNeil from uh, he's a superintendent, the assistant superintendent of, of of the school system in Arlington. And so, he and Dr. Tatum had this just wonderful, wonderful, engaging discussion. And I, yeah, again, encourage anybody who didn't get a chance to see it to go watch. Yeah, let me just, uh, if you don't mind, throw my own two cents in here, and that is to say, I was so impressed uh, with that event, um, as as with many of the others, but also with Dr. Tatum in particular, because um, you know I, I had some uh, experience with her and with this book in the school I taught in 
13 years ago, I think it was. Um, and, um, and we had a, a tremendous uh, experience, difficult, uh, challenging in ways that we absolutely needed um, and, that, and that reverberated for a long time afterwards. But my point is just, she's been doing this a long time, um, talking about this work, uh, this aspect of the work that she does. And obviously this is just one piece of, of work that she does. Um, but she has been at it a long time, and I um, was so impressed by her ability, as you've just cited, to meet people wherever they might be um, in terms of tuning in and 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 trying to uh, you know begin to wrestle or be you know be somewhere along the way towards wrestling with these things. Uh, you know, for somebody who, like I said, has been having to have the same kinds of conversations. Uh, for a very long time, uh, she remains just just very kind of vital and fresh and 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 cheerful and kind uh, and hopeful. Uh, you know, so it, in general, that was something that I took from much of the acti- many of the activities around this is not just this is hard work that we need to do, but also a sense of hopefulness and a, a trust as you mentioned around Tim Hall, in that process, Mm -hmm. uh, in this process that we're all engaged in and need to stay uh, with and on top of for, you know, some um, untold amount of time going forward. Yeah, And, and she really conveyed that it is possible that, you know, that we are doing it. Every time we have these conversations, every time we address this, this challenging subject, we're, we're, we're helping, we're helping and we're trusting the process. And, um, I would also say that my observation of of Dr. Tatum is that her commitment is contagious, and it, go, I mean, it underscores what you just said about how you you know you worked or you learned from her years and years ago, and that stayed with you. You know, you you felt a resonance, you felt a, a familiarity with her and her work that you know. I think you know it, it just it goes to show how much staying power these ideas that she's conveying have, and how contagious that commitment can be. Yeah, and and. You know, last thing from from me is just she does a really great job, and I thought the conversation itself did um, of kind of elucidating without judgment the fact that there are this there's so many complicated layers to this. There are positives and negatives in places that you wouldn't have expected, um, and she navigates uh, her audience um, in the book and you know in real life, so to speak. Um, through that in, in so, so adroitly. And, and, you know, again, I was just impressed anew um, with, with that. Um, anyway, w- w- certainly we should probably just keep going since both of us clearly were, um, you know, mu- much taken by and, and, you know, feel like there's so much uh, in um, the, the conversations and activities um, that you guys presented throughout the month. Um, but I know we have other stuff to talk about too. So <laughs> you're ready to move on. I, I, I yeah. will. Yeah. Um, that other stuff uh, talk about processes. Let's find out about a process that I think everybody uh, who's listening is going to be, you know, their ears are going to be uh, very, very much perked up for this. Um, Yes, indeed, folks. Uh, we will be able to walk back into the library and stay there for a full 15 minutes uh, under particular, uh, you know, with, with certain kinds of constraints. But it is great news. So first of all, thanks for sharing this with us. I, You know, um, it really is something I've been waiting for, and I imagine lots of other people too. So tell us how things are going to work. Sure, sure. So we know and, and we deeply appreciate that people – People's experience of the library, uh, you know, it, it, it's a physical thing as well as, you know, so, I mean, it's, you, you take away the materials, but ultimately a lot of people miss being in the stacks and browsing and doing other things that they're accustomed to doing in the library, like making photocopies, the simple things that you rely on at the library to, to be able to do. So we know that 15 minutes is not a lot of time. And we know that people are going to, you know, want to spend more time. This is about supporting that experience of browsing, that experience of going through the stacks and finding what you want. Um, 
within the safety guidelines and the, the parameters that we need to work within to keep our staff and patrons safe. So um, the leadership team and I have been engaged in trying to figure out, you know, just how to, how to, how to support this next phase of library service over the last several months. And we will be launching this effective tomorrow, Friday, April 2nd. I'm not sure when this is airing. So uh, Friday, April 2nd, you will be able to go onto the Robbins Library website. And the first link that you see under site links is gonna be get a browsing pass. Click on that link and you, you are taken to a page where there are two options of passes to reserve. One is for the general collections, which is the first floor, second floor, third floor, and the fourth floor friends book sale. And the other kind of pass, and that's an individual pass, by the way. So if you reserve a general collections pass, you have to do that for each person in your party, whether it's you and your spouse, you and your partner, whatever. Um, and then we have a family pass for the children's room, which is gonna be, I know, a hot ticket. So um, if you're reserving a family pass, all you have to do is indicate the number of people in your party. Um, there's also an attestation for each type of pass. So before you come to the library, you need to be able to assure us that you are not experiencing symptoms, that you haven't been in close contact with someone who's positive, and that you are feeling you know, well and, and, and that you're gonna wear your mask and keep social distance within the, the building, which we know people are so accustomed to now, but we, just, we do have that little attestation within the, the reservation um, forum system. So once you get your pass you'll and you have to reserve it at least a day in advance, so there will be plenty of passes available. You just have to reserve a day in advance um, and then when you arrive at the library, it's going to be a little bit different looking. Um, people are accustomed to doing drop-in checkout. That's going to continue. So you do not need an appointment if all you're doing is coming in and picking up your reserve materials or your grab bag. Um, you can do that the same way that you have been all this time without an appointment. But if you do have an appointment, you're going to be all over in a line on your right. There's going to be blue arrows on the floor indicating that that's the browsing line. You're gonna be greeted in at a greeter table a little bit further into the lobby. And that person is just gonna welcome you. It's gonna make sure that you're there at your appointed time. And they're gonna make sure that you understand you know, how, where, where you need to go in the library with the pass that you have. And, um, and just answer any simple questions that you may have about the experience and, and whatnot. We also have, of course, a lot of information on the Browsing Pass site about the things that you can and can't yet do in the library space. So once you're once you're there, and by the way, you'll have 15 minutes to arrive. So if you are running a little bit late or you need to find parking, you have a little buffer within that appointment time. And so we don't want people stressing like, oh, if I'm not there right at nine o'clock, they're not going to let me in. Mm -hmm. You've got a little buffer there. So um, so we hope that between um, between the helpful signage that we have in the library, the helpful staff who will be there to help guide people through the, our spaces if they need it. Um, and some of the other measures that we're putting into place, uh, people will be able to make the most of that uh, supermarket sweep, 15 minutes. So um, I'm happy to talk about some of those other measures too. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I gotta say, you know, as a patron, um, really appreciative of the fact that you guys have are working hard because this sounds like a system that's going to be pretty complicated to get up and running, and then and then and then maintain. And uh, and I think we'll we'll delve into that a little bit more in a second. But the to me, the simple fact is, you guys had a choice of continuing to not be open um, until it's you know really hundred percent safe or something like that. Um, but but you're doing the harder thing in a sense here um, by allowing a, in in a contingent way all of us to indeed access the library and get some of that magic that we um, are used to and rely on. Um, so, you know, first of all, appreciation for that. Um, but I am curious about various elements of this. One is how will the 15 minutes work? Um, is this, I mean, I can't imagine that you can <laughs> rely on an honor system. So how, if, especially if you're giving people a little buffer. So if somebody has a nine o'clock appointment, let's say an 11 o'clock appointment, and they show up at 11.08 and they pass into the library at 11.10, does that mean that they get to 11.25? And how do you figure that out? Um, 
that kind of thing. That is exactly, that's exactly right about the honor system. We actually pride ourselves at the library in trusting people. First of all, we trust you to have a library card and use it. <laughs> you could come in every day and walk away with all of our materials and we would never know the difference. So we're very accustomed and comfortable at the library with working on the honor system. What we've also seen is that patrons are extremely respectful of one another and of the staff and of all of the rules that have gone into place to keep people safe during this time. I mean, we've seen almost 100% mask compliance and those few cases of non-mask compliance like are remedied in a minute because the person forgot or they, you know, just needed to adjust it in some way. Um, so, you know, we are going to be trusting that people are going to be watching the clock, making sure that they keep their, their visits within 15 minutes. And um, we're not policing people. We don't like to police people anyway. I mean, we understand that like, you know, if you're standing in line to check something out, you might go a little bit past your 15 minutes because you're standing in line and you need to pick up a reserve. I mean, we have allowances for that. Part of why we are basing the capacity for browsing on the step three, if I'm getting this right, the state's phase three step two capacity rules is because we wanted to build in some comfort with re regard to that capacity. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very important to us that people do follow the rules and um, abide by the rules that by the by the um, guidelines that we're putting into place. But provided people, provided most of the people do the right thing, we're we're comfortable with it. And we're you know obviously if it if we need to revisit anything about it, we'll do so. But I feel really strong in this plan. The health department, uh, you know, reviewed the plans, and I, I think that it's going to be fine. I, mm -hmm. you know, I think people are going to want more time. That's natural, but I really think, you know, between the, again, the capacity limitations and the fact that we're really emphasizing the short-term appointment, we're emphasizing no seating um, by turning by putting the chairs away, literally, physically. Um, and that's how other libraries have been supporting this as well. It's been very much kind of honor system, greeters. Um, we're, we're probably one of the only libraries with an online reservation system. And that was actually, it, it was important for us to, to set that up because of how our, our door and lobby space is configured. Um, there was no other way to kind of monitor um, the, the appointment system. So mm -hmm. that's why that's, yeah, I'm getting about that, that, that uh, kind of online um, registration system in, in a second. Um, I'm so glad uh, that you mentioned in, in your response um, that the library basically trusts its patrons. Um, it, it, I realized as you began to speak, I thought to myself, yeah, probably why wouldn't an honor system work when, without being too over the top about this, it does feel over a long period of time, spending a lot of hours in libraries for myself, that, you know, there are spaces that do tend to bring out the best rather than the worst in people. Um, and I think back to your guys' decision uh, some years ago now to um, stop charging fines for people returning books and other materials late. Um, and I think a lot of people's initial reaction to that was, what? You know, how, you know, how can you open that door? And yet I have checked in with you, um, you know, periodically since then about that. And that system s seems by all accounts to be working really, really well. I know, again, speaking only for myself, that, you know, I might hold on to a book a day or two long, longer so I can finish it or something like that. But you know, I'm going to be mindful of getting that back because I know that somebody is very possibly waiting or going to find it browsing and want it, et cetera. I'm sure that's how everybody else feels and operates. And so, you know, I, I understand uh, the confidence with which you are embarking on this. And, uh, I, you know, I'm really glad to hear that. Um, but you were just mentioning that people have an opportunity and, and will need to really make some reservations um you know online explain explain how that will work sure and that's not the only option we understand that not everyone has access to the internet and not even everyone has access to telephones for that matter so there are a couple of other ways that you can get an appointment for browsing you can call our hotline um and you can also if you don't have access to um 
to a computer or a phone, you can go, just go through to our, our circulation counter and the staff there can make an appointment for you for the, the next day or for the future. Um, so we're accommodating, trying to build in some equity that way. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as you had asked about reserving a pass, Right. Yeah, I actually I was thinking about the mobile checkout option. Oh that, yes, I apologize. The mobile checkout. I, yes, yes. I, I misspoke, but that's what. No, I'm that's saying. okay. That's okay. I'm glad you misspoke. It gave me an opportunity to offer the other options available to those who want to reserve a pass. But mobile checkout. Thank you for raising mobile checkout. Um, so in your Minuteman app, which is um, anyone can download for free um, through your favorite app store, you can get the Minuteman Library Network app. And on that app, when you'll load in your library card number and um, in, the, in the My Account section, which is this little person section, it says View My Record. Oops, nope, sorry. <laughs> I went too far into the app in the first place. So under My Account, you have this option here. It's, now, it's called Mobile Checkout. And so right in the bottom on the left. Yeah, it might be in a different position on oh, people's screens depending on how their, their app displays. But once you click mobile checkout, you get this little barcode reader. You can't really see it that well because I'm holding it up to another screen, but you get a barcode reader and you can check out anything that has a barcode in the library um, on the spot. So you can avoid all the lines. You can avoid the self-checkout machine by using your mobile checkout app where you are standing in the library. So you pick up a book from the shelf, you see that it has a barcode, you pull up your, your app, you scan the barcode, and it can't be the, the ISBN. <laughs> so don't, don't try to scan the ISBN. That's, what, that's, what, that's for the, the retail environment. So you'll look for the Robbins Library barcode mm -hmm. and you'll scan that and the item will be checked out to you right then and there. And it works not only for books and DVDs and uh, any other types of materials. It also works for our library of things material or things, <laughs> I should say. Um, it works if you want to, you know, walk up and check out even one of the Chromebooks that we have in our library of things right now. Um, you can walk up to the shelf where we have all the Chromebooks lined up and check out a Chromebook for yourself. So it's really, it's, it's a fabulous convenience for this time, especially. And it was developed at the same time that the contactless pickup app was developed for, for libraries. Um, so we, Minuteman works with a company to, to develop these, these new uh, initiatives to help support whatever use the library is, is getting during COVID. And, and this was one of, the, one of the developments that came about as a result of, of the pandemic, but also it's just a great thing to have even beyond the pandemic too. So we're so excited about mobile checkout. We hope you'll try it. And yeah, uh, we'll I'm be there. Sorry, I missed the last yeah. thing you said there. I'm too busy checking out a book here. <laughs> you don't have a book. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're at your house, James. <laughs> so no, yeah, because that, that I mean, I have to say, um, as you as you just said, well beyond the pandemic, that is a great little innovation um, for those of us who are again comfortable. Uh, I'm I'm very used to now over the course of, of time using the mobile app. Um, for any number of things in terms of keeping track of what I've, you know, what I've got, where it's at, um, et cetera. And um, so, you know, having that option now um, at my fingertips, literally, uh, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> That's great. It's great. It feels it feels like magic when you do it for the first time. You're just like, oh, is it really mine now? Can I really just walk out? I mean, even I feel that way when I'm, and, you know, I've been using it for a couple months now. But it it's uh, it, it really does feel empowering. And then you know, when you go to my account in the app, it, there's the book that you just checked out, and you still get the reminders the same way that you do if you check out with a with a staff member. So, and we know obviously, like this isn't this mobile checkout does not replace our staff. I want to emphasize that. Um, we have, there are a lot of reasons that you still need to go to um, the checkout point at our circulation desk, um, not least of all because you have a hold to check out or a, you know, a grab bag on reserve to check out. There are lots of, lots of things you need to do in person at the counter. Get a library card, for example, a physical card. So, so yeah, I mean, all the things that you just said have something in common and that is that they, you know, they are, they are physical objects. Um, how does the mobile checkout work with electronic materials? Well, if you're using electronic materials, you're likely doing it through Libby, which is a totally separate app on your phone. Okay. So, so you'll, you'll still reserve your um, digital books, your downloadable books, and your downloadable audio books in the same way that you do now. Okay. 
great. Thanks for that clarification. Um, one other thing I know I want to ask you about, and that is um, I've noticed from coming into the library for the contact, more or less contactless pickup, or and now the modified pickup system over the last few months, um, that you have needed to be using the reading room, one of the most exquisite spaces in town, um, to you know for staff operations, basically. Um, I assume you're going to have to continue to do that, and that that is not going to be a space that is available for for browsers in their 15 minutes. That's true. We still have we have to use the reading room to support socially distanced staff workstations. The circulation staff is one of our is is our largest department at the library, and so you know it's a it's a real beehive of activity. We need to spread people out, so um, we're using the circulation office that we of course normally have, and then we have five socially distanced workstations in that reading room, including the two checkout points. So we're, and we're adding a checkout point. So anyway, it, it'll still be a little while before you can lounge in the reading room with your favorite book. But, um, you know, we, we know that that um, people also just feel excited to just be back in the space and see the room. <laughs> like oh, yeah. even just seeing it is a nice thing for a lot of people. Um, yeah. We know it's not the I mean, same. I, but... I'm not trying to introduce a downer into the conversation. <laughs> I promise. I just wanted to clarify for for myself and for others that you know that that's that that's the case makes a lot of sense of course but i know that i'm not the only one for whom the reading room in particular is just you know it, it's a it's it's a bit of a magical space it, it just uh there's something about it and um so that's fine we we can we can afford to be patient uh for for a, a while longer especially again um, in acknowledgement of the fact of all the efforts you uh, have made in order to be able to to con to offer this opportunity uh, to Arlington's reading public. Happy to do so. And I would be remiss if I did not mention Fox as well. I need to, to talk about Fox for a moment. Yes, um, we know that Fox, Fox Library users are very eager to get back into Fox as well. We're also eager to support the Fox and Robbins shop in the little in in the Fox Library space, um, but we have to we have to keep Fox closed a little bit longer. Um, not least of all because we have a cup we have Fox staff actually working at Robbins to support everything that we're doing at Robbins in the children's room and elsewhere. Um, so we need to hold on to that staff for a while longer due to some shortages that we have experienced, and. And yet, and it also um, comes down to how we support both spaces in terms of the level of cleaning that needs to happen. And the, there are a lot of considerations that go into supporting a public facility during COVID. And we we don't have the ability to, to support both facilities during this time being open to the same level. We always like to have a consistency of service between Robbins and Fox as much as we can. And so, that's those are some of the reasons why Fox is going to remain closed a little while longer. Well, you know, you said a little bit earlier. Whoa, um, you said a little bit earlier that uh, you know that you trust us, and we certainly trust you and and your judgment. So um, you know, when Fox is open, we will celebrate that, of course. But um, we need to uh, just kind of. Uh, accept what progress has been made and it's clear progress. Um, and also, uh, you know, with one more note of thanks and appreciation for the fact that the library, right from the get-go with this in this pandemic, stood central place um, in people in in people's quality of life here in this town and has managed to adapt um, in highly successful ways. Uh, to the constraints of the pandemic, still provide a lot, a lot uh, of what you have always done uh, for the community. So, thanks for that. Well, thank you, James. We have a lot, a lot, lot, lot more road ahead of us, but we're we're happy to be where where we're able to be right now. So that's good. Yeah, let let's celebrate for a minute, and then yeah, <laughs> and, and anticipate uh, you know more work down the road, as you said. Um, we will certainly be here to uh, you know be a receptive, interested, engaged audience around every new step that you guys take. Um, we will talk to you again soon. Um, but thanks so much for sharing this exciting news, and also. Uh, for revisiting um, what was a really successful community read this year in Arlington Reads Together that I think many people 
will remember and take forward with them. We hope so. And thank you to ACMI for helping produce some of those programs. We're very grateful. I'm happy to do so from our end. It's, 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 it's a great thing to be involved with. Um, all right, that will wrap it up for today. I have been um, speaking to Andrea Nikolai, who is the director of our libraries, Robbins and Fox here in town. Um, and uh, I will see you, Andrea, I hope up in your office. I'll wave when I come in. Um, and, uh, and hopefully many of you out there in the audience as well, uh, as we begin to once again inhabit uh, the space that we so love uh, in our library. So. For this library update, Talk of the Town, I'm James Milan. Thanks, Andrea, and thank you. We'll see you next time.